So let's look at changing properties in a variable after we've loaded our screens. In the defining variable section of the manual, it shows you all of the shorthand identifiers for each of the various declarations that we can change inside of our screen by using variable name dot whatever to change anything from access level to colors, font sizes, and read and write characteristics. I made a new example easy screen. That's just a basic speed and feed calculator. We can see up here we have a calculate button. We have a unit button here. If I put in 650 surface feet, you'll notice in the corner where the picture is at, as I cursor up and down, I get a different picture. Inside of my diameter, I give it 0.5 diameter. I can say that my chip load is two and a half thousandths per tooth. And now we're running a four tooth cutter. Once I'm done with that, if I hit calculate, I will get an RPM output and I will get an inch per minute feed rate output. If I have these all set to zero and I hit calculate, in the dialog box below, I get an insufficient data alarm. If I press this button here, it then switches to metric. So now I can put in surface meters instead of surface feet. We could say 300 surface meters with a 12 millimeter diameter cutter with a 0.1 chip load and four flute end mill. Hit calculate and we could see that we get an output of 7950 RPM and 3180 millimeters per minute. When I press the unit button again, you'll see that I get three different texts. I get the default text, I get the text when I'm in metric, and I get the text when I'm in inches. Looking into the code a little bit, there's not much different that I did at the top. You'll see here I have my start method, which declares my soft key in HS11, horizontal soft key position 11. My main menu, I didn't really change much aside from the dimensions that I gave it here, which are the position and size of the window which allows me to open it in that lower pane. And these values here are the position of the default photo, which is nmil without .png. Inside of my variable declarations, I have speed per minute, diameter, chip load, num teeth, RPM, and feed per min. These are all the variable declarations that come up as user data input. Underneath that, I have this units helper variable. I have my vertical soft key declarations here for the words that get displayed when the screen is loaded. In my press method for vertical soft key one, I check to see if speed per minute is equal to zero or chip load is equal to zero or number of teeth is equal to zero. And if those conditions are met, it will output a dialog of insufficient data, which we had seen previously. And looking at that, because I'm using OR statements, if I put in 350 and I put in 0.5, if I don't have a chip load and I hit calculate, it's still going to say insufficient data because it's looking for a value in speed per minute or chip load or number of teeth. I actually could add diameter as well. Go in and say dia. So or dia is equal to zero. So if any of these conditions are zero, it will output insufficient data because there's not enough data to calculate the speed and feed. If that condition is not met, it goes into this else if statement and it says else if, if the units helper variable is equal to mm, the RPM is equal to speed per minute times 318 divided by the diameter. And there we can terminate with an end if. We could also do another else if units equals to inch or in. And in that case, RPM is equal to speed per minute times 3.82 divided by dia. And then we can end if there as well. These else conditions are standalone. I can terminate them with an end if inside of here without having any kind of compile alarms. I have this if up here, which is terminated by the end if down here. These ifs are terminated 
within themselves in these else if conditions. After it does these two else ifs, it then calculates feed per minute, which is equal to chip load times number of teeth times RPM. In our vertical soft key two, we can see here that I got silly and I called it millimetric. Anybody that knows me knows that I refer to metric as millimetric and I will sometimes call inches freedom units. In our VS2 press method, we check to see if units is equal to IN and if it is equal to IN, our chip load dot UT is equal to the variable units. So what I'm doing is I'm accessing the declared variable here, units, and I'm taking the default information that units is set to and I'm using that as my output text. Where do I find my default units output text? If I scroll down to my load method, we'll see that upon loading the screen, the units variable defaults to IN. So it defaults to inch mode. It also defaults chipload.ut to units, dia.ut to units, and feedpermin.st to units with a concatenation, and I'm adding a string slash min. Looking back at the easy screen, you'll see that at the bottom, I have IN slash min under dia and chip load. Next to that, the unit text says IN. The dot UT in my load method under chip load dot UT refers to the unit text. The UT under dia refers to the unit text. And feed per min dot ST refers to the small text. The small text being the leftmost text box that gets created when we declare variables. Going back up to our press method, I have chipload.ut equals units, dia.ut equals units, feedpermin.st equals units, concatenate with slash min, vs2.st equals freedom units, which is our vertical soft key text. And then once the conditions are all met under the press method, it then switches units to mm. Under that, we do an else if units is equal to mm, it will change all of the display text to mm because it's referring to the units variable. And then at the bottom of that, it switches units back to in and gets it ready to switch back to inches. So that's just the tip of the iceberg for things that we can do with these properties. You can do a lot of stuff with these properties. You can change graphic text as you press a button or background colors, foreground colors. We can change the input mode of a box. So let's say for example, we were to modify this calculator to where it could take in either speed per minute or RPM. But depending on whether we put a value into RPM or speed per minute, we wanted to lock the other box out. What we could do is we can build a conditional that if we put in a value to speed per minute, the RPM box would then change the write mode and it would become an inaccessible read-only variable or vice versa. We could put a value into RPM and then the surface units would automatically lock out. So we wouldn't be able to access both of them. We could only access one or the other. And you'll notice that, again, I did change the photo for each of these boxes. So depending on which one has focus, it will change the graphic image. Now that I did with the variable callouts here. So I'm calling up the help photo inside of here, but instead of doing that, I could also use a focus method to do that as well. I could even have it to where I'm using one photo by default but then if the value changes inside of here to a different value, say I put in a three inch diameter value, I could even have it to where anything over a three inch diameter, it would automatically assume that I'm calling up a face mill and I can use the change logic to change the photo 
and represent a face mill instead of an end mill. So there's a lot of nifty little things that we can do with the change properties inside of our variable calls. And just getting into this load method here, I know I touched on it a little bit before, but the load method is useful for defining default status of variables, of variable status like we have here. So instead of having to explicitly define up in my short text or my help text that I'm displaying whatever I want to purvey up here, I put it into the load method because I can't just type in the word units here because of the way that the .com file actually compiles the easy screen code. It reads from top to bottom. So it'll read all of these variables, it'll store them into the memory, but it doesn't look at the load section here and see that there's the variable declaration here, or even see that there's a variable declaration underneath all of these variables. So instead of using the helper variable up in this area here, I define the helper variable and then down in the load section, I then establish the helper variable. Load sections also for loading the names of subroutine sections and things like that. 